Highgate vampire. Dave Smiler Brown stepped inside from the warm summer night into the hall of a dilapidated but once impressive three-storey house in Highgate. It wasn't quite a commune. It wasn't as organised as that. The inhabitants were colourful. There were various free spirits there and people kept coming and going. Poets, dancers, writers, electricians and people who had completely dropped out of the rat race to take drugs in the upstairs rooms. Smiler didn't take many drugs. Just a bit of weed to relax him now and again. He avoided alcohol like the plague. He saw what it had done to his dad. The odd tab of acid, but that was just recreation. Everyone in his circle did it. As for what he did for a living, well, he didn't really do anything. He tried some expressionist painting, but he was crap at it. Couldn't play the guitar. Maybe he'd try the drums one day if he could get a drum kit. But something would turn up. Some talent would reveal itself. And it was only 1972 and he was on the dole. You could live like that then. Smiler had been there at that big house for three months. Prior to that, he was at another squat in Hackney, but he preferred Highgate. And he got in there because he'd known a bloke who told him about the squat. That bloke Michael was long gone now. He'd headed off to Marrakesh with his girlfriend. But it was all okay. Life was good. Smiler read comics a lot, mainly Thor, but inevitably some Superman. He had his own room, but there was a communal room with a gramophone that he also frequented. Right now, Smiler relaxed with a roll he laced with herbal green and bathed in the entertaining beats of Led Zeppelin III. The night was warm. He'd had a free meal from Denise and he had nothing in particular on his mind. There were a couple of others in the room. They came and went. The only one who stayed and tried to make conversation was Leonard. Leonard was new to the squat, and the killing thing about him was that he was an albino. His hair was as white as the Milky Bar kids, his face as pale as talcum powder, and his eyes as pink as the white rabbits. Even his eyelashes were white. Smiler shivered all over when the live version of Smoke on the Water pumped out of the record player. Somebody spoke. Hello? Smiler was listening to the lyrics and singing along. We all came out to Mantra on the Lake Geneva shoreline. Smiler realised someone had changed the record without him noticing and wondered who did it. He didn't mind. He was very easygoing, live and let live. It had been Piper at the Gates of Dawn. He wasn't complaining. He never complained. That's why they called him Smiler. Hello? Someone was definitely calling him. The voice came again. Hello, mate. Smiler, isn't it? The sound of his name finally summoned him back from a rolling, riding world of bass and guitar and drums. Smiler sailed in from a smooth world of mellow to the writhing smoke of the communal room where it smelled of cannabis and patchouli oil. His head was foggy as he smiled at Leonard the Albino. Hey man, what's happening? Leonard smiled with his pale pink lips. His pink eyes with surrounding white lashes like paintbrushes looked deep into Smiler's befuddled brown ones. Smiler's head felt smoky. Pleased to meet you, mate. I'm Smiler. I'm Leonard. You been here long? Here, yeah, where's here, man? The planet? Highgate. Smiler shrugged and took another toke of the reefer and said, I sailed in and one day I'm going to sail out again. Want to have some fun, Lionel said, looking calm and cold and white as a skinny washed-out coffin worm brought to the surface by heavy rain. Smiler grinned. Fun? Fun is my middle name and my first name and my last name. Leonard laughed. I thought they called you Smiler. Fanboys are always smiling, Smiler said. He sat forward. Anyway, what's this about fun? You heard of the Highgate vampire, Leonard said. Smiler wasn't sure. He coughed. Yeah, I think. It's in Highgate Cemetery. I heard something. Smiler took a deep drag, paused while it hit him and said, Guy in a hat? Drinks blood? That's him. I thought I heard something. Leonard said, Me and a friend are going there tonight. Smiler nodded. Lovely evening for it. The weather's been fantastic. It'll be dark. Sure. Essential for vampires, I guess. Leonard said, We're going to do an exorcism. Smiler blinked. Really? What for? To get rid of the vampire. Smiler tilted his head. You want to get rid of it? 
Of course, it kills people. Really? Kills people? That's uncool. Shouldn't do that. Do you want to come? Me? Yeah. To kill a vampire? To exercise it? Drive it away? Smiler shrugged. Well, my friend Elizabeth will be there. That piqued his interest. She sounded like a girl. Smiler liked girls. He was good with them. Oh, he said. Is she pretty? Leonard laughed. Stunning. Smiler rubbed his dreamy eyes. Yeah, okay then. Night fell. The air was warm and sweet and scented with night-scented stocks and jasmine and honeysuckle from the rambling garden of the big house they were squatting in. Smiler got something to eat. Looking out for Leonard but not seeing him and grateful for that, he went back to his room. Smiler was now level-headed, dope-free, and regretting saying he'd go wandering around a graveyard in the dark. Still, there was this Elizabeth, supposedly pretty, but the question was, was she pretty enough to scare himself shitless? The hours ticked by on the gold wristwatch he'd inherited from his grandfather, the only classy item he owned, and Leonard's knock never came, and Smiler breathed a sigh of relief. He had the window open because the weather was so warm, and he heard the Highgate clocks chime midnight, time for another smoke. He felt mellow. This was his thing. He stayed up late and rose later, so midnight was early for Smiler. Leonard opened Smiler's door without knocking just as he was lighting up. You ready? Smiler froze. The albano's face was haunting in electric light. It turned out Smiler found Leonard even weirder when he was sober. Smiler shrugged, palms up in a gesture of peace. Nah, I'm not sure, man. I've got stuff to do. Really? Leonard sounded unconvinced. Sure, I've got a book about meditation I was going to read. Some Indian guru wrote it. Leonard smiled sardonically. Or are you just chicken shit scared? Smiler jerked his thumb back to indicate himself with a wide-eyed look on his face that suggested Leonard's words were the dumbest thing ever said by anyone, anywhere. Me? Scared? Yeah, you. Smiler laughed. No, of course not. I've just got this book. The book will wait. Come and meet Elizabeth. You'll like her. Unless you're a coward. That gave Smile a pause. Though he was a free spirit and all that, and didn't mind being called dirty and work shy, because people who said that were all slaves to the rat race, but being thought a coward didn't sit easy with him. But Leonard! Come on, Elizabeth will meet us there. Smiler exhaled deeply. Without much enthusiasm, he followed Leonard down the stairs and out the front door and along the garden path between rose bushes run wild and then out through a wrought iron gateway twined with honeysuckle and ivy until they emerged onto the street. A short walk from the squat and they were at the top of Swain's Lane. This steep, narrow lane led to the graveyard, flanked by high walls like a sunken ceremonial route to hell. Smiler threw his head back. It was such a lovely night. The moon was up, big and yellow, and she smiled down on them, casting ink-black shadows where she didn't reach, and washes of white ivory where she did. Black and white, black and white like a chessboard they walked, amid scents of damp willows, dreaming oaks, and resinous yews. Smiler knew, because he was not an ignorant man, that Highgate Cemetery was built in the 1830s, and filled with overdone funeral monuments which had gone to rotten ruin since the company ran out of money in the 1960s. No one officially entered the cemetery now, and the tombs and pathways were overgrown and home to foxes and owls, to night-flitting bats, and apparently to vampires. We'll go in the north gate, Leonard said. It's quieter. We'll have to climb over the gate, though. Where's your girlfriend? Smiler said. She's not my girlfriend, just a friend and she said she'd meet us here. It was a lovely night, but the thought of breaking into a graveyard unnerved Smiler a little. He said, No sign of her yet. Want to wait here? No, let's just go in. She can meet up with us in there. Oh, Smiler said, scratching the back of one hand with another. I'd rather wait for her out here. Leonard's pallid face gleamed sweaty and white in the pellucid moonlight. Come on, you shithouse. And with that, 
Leonard mounted the gate and vaulted the top of the chained-up gateway. Smiler heard a soft thump as Leonard landed in the piled-up leaf mulch on the other side. Smiler swallowed hard. On reflection, he really didn't want to be doing this. Come on, Leonard hissed impatiently out of sight. He could slink back to the squat, but then Leonard would tell everyone he was yellow. Smiler sighed. He was dying for a smoke and he didn't have any. Come on, Elizabeth's waiting, Leonard hissed. Smiler shrugged. Maybe we'd get something out of this. They might have some cigarettes. Then there was the so far unseen Elizabeth. That cheered him up. Girls liked him. They said he was vulnerable and charming. He played up to that all the time, with good results. Resignedly, he climbed and dropped into the darkness behind the padlocked gate. It was Bible black here under the cover of confused and interlocking trees. The undergrowth grew thick and bindweed and ivy fingers entwined above his head, blocking out the creamy moon. His feet sank in the damp mulch. The smell of woodlands assailed his nostrils. He couldn't see Leonard. Here, the alberna whispered. I'm here. Smiler couldn't make out much in the gloom, but the sound came from further up the path. As he set off, an owl called further into the cemetery, like a guard announcing their arrival. Smiler hurried up after Leonard. Leonard seemed to know where he was going. They walked fast along trails that ran between overdone Victorian tombs. Sometimes Leonard would hesitate as if unsure, and then grunt and go on. Smiler had to hurry to catch up. Then they came to a crossroads. The trees didn't reach here and the white moon sailed high overhead. For the first time since they entered Highgate Cemetery, Smiler could see Leonard's strange pale face. For the first time, now he was standing still, breathing lightly, he realised how scared he was. He bit his lip. What the hell was he doing in the middle of Highgate Cemetery at midnight with some bloke he didn't know? Smiler's heart thumped gently in his chest, his palms were sweaty. What now, he said. We wait. Wait for what? For me. A woman's voice whispered from the shadows behind. Startled, Smiler spun round. A young woman, maybe twenty-five, stepped out of the trees. She wore the shadows like a cloak and was unutterably beautiful. Her hair was black and her face was moon pale and tinged with some of the phosphorescence of that heavenly body. Her lips were crimson, and her eyes were like blue pools beneath her black eyebrows. She was stunning, slim with thrusting bosoms and a narrow waist that flared to full hips under her taffeta dress. Meet Elizabeth, Leonard said with a mock bow. At least Smiler thought it was a mock bow, but this girl could in fact be royalty from the air of authority and command that exuded from her. Hi, I'm Smiler, he said. Elizabeth put out her gloved hand. She wore a golden ring with a red stone set in it on her ring finger over the glove. Without knowing why he did it, he bent and kissed her ring. She laughed a sweet, tinkling sound that made his spine tingle, and a sweetness like cream soda rose up into his solar plexus. Pleased to meet you, Smiler. Me you too, Elizabeth. Leonard grinned. See, I told you you'd like her. Everyone does. Elizabeth laughed again. Leonard is such a charmer, but not everyone likes me. Far from it. Let's go on, Leonard said. They set off at a pace, Leonard leading, Smiler walking side by side with Elizabeth behind. Smiler ran his hand through his hair, trying to smooth it. So, we're doing a vampire hunt, he said. An exorcism, Leonard called back. Sure. He turned to the young beauty beside him. Hey, do you believe in vampires, Elizabeth? Oh, yes, I'm sure they exist. But here in Highgate, in London... Why not, Elizabeth said. Even her velvety voice was seductive. There are lots of reports, Leonard called back. Smiler ignored him. He was talking to Elizabeth. Really, though, a tall man in a top hat? She shrugged in the moonlight. I don't know about that. Smiler couldn't believe that anyone so beautiful would believe this crap. With her there beside him, it was important he didn't show the sizzle of anxiety that was running through him just from being here in the graveyard. Smiler was about to suggest to Elizabeth that maybe they could meet up for a coffee or a smoke the next day when Leonard stopped. Here, he said. Smiler hadn't been paying attention to where they were. He turned from Elizabeth and saw massive ornate stonework in front of him. This wasn't a single tomb. It was a mausoleum, 
And it wasn't a mausoleum for a single family, but some Victorian architect's idea of ancient Egypt. A massive stone rampart stood in front of them. Weeds and trees grew from the top, but the architecture looked ancient Egyptian, like the temple at Luxor that he'd seen in his dad's National Geographic. A deep shadow-haunted gate led within. Once there had been a wooden, huge double door, but that now hung broken on one side, and the other half tore off its hinges and pushed open to the tunnel. Behold the circle of Lebanon, Leonard said with a flourish. Smiler's mouth was dry. We're going in there, he said. He heard the quaver in his voice and tried to disguise it, but Elizabeth heard it anyway and laughed softly. She said, You're not scared, are you, Smiler? He blushed. Of course not. It's just, it's maybe not safe. It was Leonard's turn to laugh. No, it's not safe. That's why we're going. Smiler cleared his throat. To do this um, exorcism? Yes, Elizabeth said. Thing is, I don't believe in vampires, Smiler said. Elizabeth stroked his arm. Then there's nothing to worry about. But what if the place falls on us? It looks old and crumbly. It won't. We've been there before, Leonard said. Smiler's mouth went dry and his heart beat faster. He struggled to get his words out. Then said, I I'm okay, guys. I, I think I'm going to miss this. Elizabeth laughed again. Come on, Smiler, Leonard coaxed him. You wouldn't want your friends at the squat thinking you'd chickened out. Smiler frowned. No, he wouldn't. There was something strange about this. They were so insistent that he go, it didn't make sense. Why did they care if he went or not? But then it occurred to him they were maybe going to murder him. Maybe there were a couple who got weird sexual kicks out of murdering strangers. He stepped back. Uh, no. Come on, Leonard said, getting angry. Don't waste my time, Smiler. He you said you'd come. The tomb's just here, just inside and to the right. That's right, Elizabeth said. Just inside the circle. Just within the gate. Nah, sorry, I'm leaving. You won't find your way out on your own, Leonard said. Smiler's heart was going wild now with a pitter-patter of palpitations like butterfly wings. He felt sweat prickle his back. He stepped back. It was true. He'd never find his way out. But at least he wouldn't be here. He stepped back again. He half turned. He thought of running. Then Elizabeth said, Let him go. You go with him. Show him the way out. He heard the anger in Leonard's voice behind him. If you're sure, Elizabeth nodded. Maybe you'll come back tomorrow, she said to Smiler. He swallowed hard. Sure, I just wasn't in the mood tonight. Of course, she leaned up and kissed him on the cheek. Her lips were full and soft and chill. I'll take him to the north gate, Leonard said. I'll wait for you here until you come back, Elizabeth said. Then we'll do our ceremony. Smiler managed to avoid Leonard the next two days. It was Friday when he bumped into him in the kitchen, and he still looked weird. Hey man, Leonard said. Had an attack of the nerves the other night, eh? No, Smiler said as he buttered some half-burnt toast. He had some baked beans on the gas ring, bubbling away nicely. Just wasn't my thing. Funny, you thought you were into it. No, Smiler went to pour the beans on the now-buttered toast and sit down at the cluttered table. There was some pepper somewhere. He liked pepper on his baked beans. Elizabeth liked you. Smiler sat back. She did? Yeah. Smiler remembered that he liked her too. He remembered the soft brush of her lips on his cheek. He grinned. She was pretty cool. She knows. She knows you like her too. Ah, Smiler blushed. He hated being obvious, though he knew he probably often was. We're going again tonight, Leonard said. Smiler went back to eating, expertly slicing a strip of beans and toast. Leonard continued. Elizabeth wondered if you would come along. Smiler shook his head. Nah, not sure. She said if we go earlier, then maybe we'd go round to her place after and have a drink and smoke. Smiler looked up now. She lives in Highgate. Yeah, not far. She's got wine, she said. Smiler remembered how pretty she was. How long does this uh, exorcism thing take? Leonard shrugged. Not so long. She just likes the occult and things. I'll just do it for her. Smiler laughed. You ever... Uh... Leonard shook his head. No, no, I'm not her type. Smiler chewed the soggy toast and swallowed. Okay, um, I'll come along. It's not my thing, but if we're going back to hers... Leonard said, I would come back with you, but I've got another date, so I can't stay. Smiler mused. 
So, just me and her? Apparently, Leonard was grinning now. He winked. It was only half ten when they scaled the graveyard gate and dropped onto the soft earth of the other side. Smiler hissed. Where are we meeting Elizabeth? I'm here, said a velvety voice just behind his shoulder. I was waiting for you. Elizabeth, Smiler said. He couldn't help living up to his name, though he could hardly see her in the gloom, but he recognised her voice. She reached over and ran her hand up and down his bicep. Let's go, she said. Then uh, we're going for a drink. Sure. Leonard can't come, Smiler says. He says. So he told me. All the more for us, then. I smoke more than I drink. She smiled in the shadows. Wine is my poison. The redder the better. Smiler thought of the warmth of the night. You don't need to chill red wine either, but y- you've probably got a fridge. No, she said. I like it warm. They stood again before the great, decayed entrance to the circle of Lebanon. The moon tonight cast no light. Instead, she hid her face behind clouds as if afraid of witnessing what was about to happen. The monuments to the dead were wreathed in shadows and weeds. Something moved in the tangled briars to their left. Smiler jumped despite himself. Leonard laughed. Elizabeth said, probably a fox. Don't worry. Or a rat, Leonard said. A rat? Smiler was alarmed now. He didn't like rats. Let's go into the circle of Lebanon, Elizabeth said, taking Smiler's hand. He felt her gloved fingers twine through his. He had a lump of anxiety in his throat as she pulled him forward into the tunnel that led into the inner circle. He saw the doors of the tombs on each side as they came to the crescent, and the way split, going left and going right. Elizabeth led him right. Is it far? he asked. His voice didn't sound right. He hoped she didn't notice. Not far, she said. They walked on, stepping over dead branches and fallen masonry. Mice scuttled away, underfoot, and bats flitted in the air above. Smiler glanced up. Even in the darkness of the moonless night, he could see they were in a deep channel of masonry. Tombs seemed piled on top of each other. There were sepulchral doors on both sides, some gaping open. He was afraid. Still, Elizabeth held his hand and tugged him on. Leonard went in front of them. Far still, he asked. Not far, said Elizabeth. A few more careful paces, stepping over fallen bricks and pieces of rotten wood. Then Leonard stopped. Here, he said. Yes, Elizabeth said. This is it. Smiler's voice shook. Will it take long? It's just that... She stroked his arm, calming him like he was a young bull going to the abattoir. It won't take long, she said soothingly. And then we'll go for a drink he asked her, his voice stammering. She nodded, leaning in, kissing him with her plump, soft lips on his cheek. He put his hand up to where her lips had touched his skin. He felt an imprint of ice where there should be warmth. Elizabeth whispered, Then we will drink. Yes. Smiler looked at her sapphire blue eyes that seemed almost to give off their own light, and her lips painted in carnadine. She was close close enough to kiss. Her breath should be warm against his skin, a gentle sigh of life. But Smiler felt no breath. Leonard opened the door of the tomb, then stood. The sense of apprehension grew in Smiler's breast. Leonard was waiting for something. Light the candles, Elizabeth said. Smiler and she waited outside while Leonard went into the tomb. Smiler heard the scrape and flare of a match and saw a fluttering flame kindle inside the cold, silent sepulchre. He said, I'm not sure about this. Elizabeth whispered into his ear, Don't worry, my love. She was so sensual, so soft, so seductive, he felt her whispers caress him. She stroked his face with her satin fingers. Ready, Leonard called from inside the tomb. Elizabeth pulled him forward. He half resisted, then gave in. His pulse pounded. His throat tightened. He couldn't swallow. He fought to control his anxiety. He mustn't show his fear. Elizabeth wouldn't hurt him. She was so close, so close to him now. He felt her cold bones against him. They stepped to the door. Four red candles flickered in the breeze, and shadows danced around the decayed tomb. 
In all the corners, the darkness frolicked and fluttered as if awaiting a celebration. He could hardly get his words out. He tried to sound normal. Uh, this is an exorcism. They ignored him. Leonard looked at Elizabeth. Something was wrong. Smiler looked at her beseechingly. She only smiled. He saw in the tomb there was a single shelf, and on that shelf was a coffin. The coffin looked old. The top of the coffin was removed, but there was no body in it. Uh, I don't get it, Smiler said, relief flooding over him. He almost laughed. Where's the vampire? Elizabeth giggled, putting her hand to her mouth to stifle it. Smiler looked at it quizzically, then back at the coffin. There was a small, tarnished brass nameplate screwed into the old varnished wood. Smiler peered at it. He couldn't read it from where he stood, and it seemed suddenly important that he read it. He stepped forward. They didn't prevent him. Smiler traced the words of the engraving with the tips of his fingers to read it better. It said, Here lie the remains of Elizabeth Bell, cursed in life, cursed in death. May the Lord have mercy, should she rise again. Smiler began to tremble. I, I don't like this, he said. He was sweating. He was shaking. He was unbearably cold. C can we go to yours now, Elizabeth, he said. Elizabeth's crimson lips were half open, her blue eyes glittered with wicked luminescence, her teeth were long and white and sharp, her face was pale as new-fallen snow. Oh, Smiler, she said, we already have. Hello. That was my story, The Highgate Vampire. And now that uh, is the third of the stories that I've published with vampire in the title. So I think I've already uploaded Dalston Vampire, The Highgate Vampire, and The Kroglin Vampire. Um, I may do more stories with that in the title later, but that's all I've got so far. To say something about the origin of the story, well, you may know something about the history of the so-called true Highgate vampire. There was a great scare in the late 60s and early 70s that there was in fact a vampire living in Highgate in North London. So Highgate Cemetery, it, it, the story doesn't explain, but Highgate Cemetery was one of the great Victorian cemeteries that opened around central London in the mid-Victorian period because the old churches in the city had become full. And Highgate, on its hill with its great view, was, was um, constructed as one of a number of uh, gothic, very gothic Victorian cemeteries. And it was quite prestigious, and there are many, very, many famous people buried there. Even people like George Michael to this day, you have to get special dispensation to be buried in the West Cemetery of Highgate. There are two, the East Cemetery where Karl Marx is, and the West Cemetery. And if I've got those wrong, I'm sure somebody will correct me. What happened was it made a lot of money. There were these very ornate tombs built, the, the Circle of Lebanon, and this was, this was like um, they were interred there. Then with the catacombs, there was a church. Anyway, it sort of fell out of favour. And then during the First World War, there were a team of gardeners. A lot of them went away to fight and never came back. And it never really took off and it fell into disarray and it was overgrown. And then by the 50s and 60s, it was abandoned and it was, it was wired up and nobody went there and it wasn't used for burials anymore. But it became a haven for wildlife, but it also became a haven for weird people um, and it attracted all sorts of odd people. It's a really interesting story. I've got a, a book called The Highgate Vampire by Sean Manchester. The Bishop Sean Manchester ordained in an in a, a obscure Gnostic Christian church. Well, there was a great feud between him and a guy called David Farrant about the vampire, and it became a great media scandal. Uh, there were uh, reputedly um, people found drained of blood, foxes drained of blood, and all these kind of things. But there was all sorts of bizarre stuff went on, black magic rituals and all sorts of things in Highgate Cemetery. And the friends of Highgate Cemetery became very wary of anything to do with vampires and the occult. So this was during the 1970s. As an aside, when I used to lead ghost tours, I think it was 2004, 
we we had a group of people and we actually visited and because they were Americans they couldn't believe how rude the people in Highgate Cemetery were because basically we were paying to be there but we mustn't mention that we were interested in ghosts and things like that so we had a very interesting historical tour. So um, I've recounted this story elsewhere, but there was a, a woman who was a bit like Margaret Thatcher, all pearls and very posh. And she said, you know, put your cameras down. Don't do this, don't do that, don't do that. And you mustn't do this and don't do that. Everybody in America in the service industries in retail is really charming. Whereas in the UK, it's a bit more like Eastern Europe. You know, they, they almost begrudge you spending your money there. And they couldn't get their head around this anyway. So we took a group round, and the other bizarre thing was the leader of the group had sussed us. He was a bright lad. He was just young. He was a volunteer. And he was a pure albino. I'm not kidding you. Now, just because it's quite unusual, to, I was at school with a lad who was as well. Imagine we're walking through this wilderness with tombs, fallen down tombs, with rumors of vampires and black magic and things like this. And we were the only people in this huge cemetery. It's very easy to get lost there. And the guide kept going, keep up, keep up, don't get lost, don't fall behind. And it was like, it really added to the atmosphere. And some of my uh, tourists were goths. And there was one girl from Boston, I think, who was collecting grave dirt for some kind of nefarious reason. I don't know exactly why. And she was doing this surreptitiously and the light was failing, okay? And he then referred to the catacombs. Now, I've been back since and been in the catacombs, but he said, even I'm not allowed to go into the catacombs, only the most senior of the friends. So you immediately get this idea of some kind of secret society. And going back to the story of the Highgate vampire from the 1970s, you can Google all of this, not my story, but their story. There was supposed to be some master vampire living in the catacombs. So we're back to our tour. This albino guide was very keen to hurry us out before dark came and very uh, wary about the catacombs and the things in it. And I had a very strange and pleasant feeling around the circle of Lebanon. I'm not, I'm not psychic. I'm not really prone to these things. But when I used to do the ghost tours, every now and again, I would have weird turns, you know. Not very often, but every now and again. So anyway, that is my experience, some of my experience in Highgate Cemetery. The story itself. So it's set in the 1970s because it is completely fictional. It has nothing to do with the reportedly true story of the Highgate Vampire, but it's set in the same period because I'm kind of fond of the 70s anyway. They do say that you, when you're, in a, when you're older, you still like the music you liked when you were 17. And when I was 17, I was listening to, you know, Hawkwind, who I still listen to, Led Zeppelin, Black Sabbath, Deep Purple, all that kind of stuff, Uriah Heep. So I set it in a commune and my very pleasant, very dopey, work shy, hippie guy is a lamb to the slaughter, really. And I think the albino in the story is, is based on my guide, really. It, it's quite tongue-in-cheek. It's not supposed to be scary, scary. I think in this case, you know what's happening. So when you tell a story, you can have, um, and I forget the difference, one suspense. Anyway, there's three kinds. One is where you and the character, the reader and the character, know the same amount. Yeah. Then there's the bit where... The character knows more than the reader. You think of some Agatha Christie's things like this. The murder of Roger, or oh, what was his name? Somebody will correct me. It'll come to me after I finish doing this. And that is the unreliable narrator. So the narrator's not being totally straight with you, okay? And then in this case, you know more than the, the main character. My, my young man is, a, is, a, is an innocent in many ways. And we, we totally get what's happening to him and who she is. And he is so naive. And so what I want to create is that, that, that horror movie kind of thing where you're saying to the character, no, don't go into the cellar. Why would you go? Don't go with that person. So that's what I wanted to do. And turn it right at the end with that line, which I still like, you know, when can we go to your place? Yeah. 
oh, Smiler, we already have. So that's that. That's the story of the Highgate Vampire.